Now, North Korea's ruling party has slammed a planned joint air force drill by the U.S. and South Korea over the Korean Peninsula. Newspaper of the ruling party described the joint war games as, quote, an all-out provocation against Pyongyang. It also warned the upcoming air drill may lead to a nuclear war at any moment. Five-day maneuvers are set to begin on Monday with some 230 aircraft in attendance. Tensions have increased in the region since North Korea successfully tested a new intercontinental ballistic missile, which it says can target the entire U.S. continent. Now, Pyongyang has repeatedly said it will not relinquish its nuclear deterrence and missile capabilities unless Washington and its regional allies end their hostile policy toward the country. And joining us out of Ontario, Canada, for more on this is Mr. Jason Unruhe, political commentator. Hello, Mr. Unruhe, and thanks for joining us back on the program. Now, Jason, and we've heard uh, uh, Moscow say all week, telling the U.S., look, the kind of rhetoric you're employing with respect to dealing with Pyongyang and these actions, you know, scaling and stepping up your uh, war games, they're not helping the situation one bit. Your thoughts, please. Oh, this is not going to help things at all whatsoever. I mean, we understand why this is happening. The United States is performing these exercises in retaliation for the recent DPRK missile test that uh, shows a significant leap in its technological development and that it can reach the entire entirety of the U.S. mainland. Uh, these kinds of actions will only provoke the DPRK even further. It is the DPRK that's in the subordinate position. It's, it's not the global hegemonic power. It's the one developing a means by which to defend itself from the imperialist power of the United States. And simply uh, standing there and threatening them each time they demonstrate some kind of an ability to stand up for themselves really only displays what kind of a bully the United States really is. And it seems, I mean, there's a lot of South Koreans that aren't really on board with what the U.S. is doing. I mean, current uh, President Moon Jae-in, when he came to office, he actually entertained trying to open talks with Pyongyang. But it seems like this Washington administration is hell-bent on taking this thing into a, a whole different parameter nobody really wants to see. Oh, no. Uh, South Korea doesn't want a war with the DPRK. Uh, they've been living with the threat and the possibility of war for about 60 years. And they're, they're frankly tired of it. They, they don't really want to worry about this kind of thing taking place, you know, right inside their homes, which is where this uh, would happen. And they certainly do start to, start to see that the, that the United States is the aggressor in this situation. The DPRK said that it just wants to be left alone so that it can develop itself and pursue its, pursue its own destiny. And the Korean people, uh, the people in the South are just as happy to let them do that. Uh, they don't really want hostile with people that are essentially the same people themselves, even despite the great division that has taken place. And the, the people uh, largely did vote for the current president because of his softer stance towards the DPRK, because they oppose this kind of hostile action, which is being forced upon them by United States foreign policy and their imperialist control over South Korea. And Jason, we don't have a lot of time, but at this point, I mean, I wouldn't say, uh, would, you, would you see it more prudent, but wouldn't it be an option to, in, to explore the avenue of maybe Seoul hooking up with Moscow and Beijing to try to find or to come up to a solution to at least open dialogue, maybe pull the U.S. into it halfway through the uh, you know, negotiations? I mean, some, we have to start talking at this point when the word nuclear, the phrase nuclear war is, is just getting tossed around. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, definitely. There should be negotiations. There definitely should be talks about decreasing the tensions on the peninsula. All the United States would have to do is essentially de-escalate its military forces inside of the country. I have a significant reduction of the number of people inside the country, if not uh, preferably eliminate them altogether. And it would be great if there could be a much more peaceful situation, which is what the world wants. The world doesn't want this kind of hostility going on. But it seems like it's the United States alone that simply refuses to treat the situation with the, frankly, the dignity and the common sense that it deserves. We have to go. Thank you uh, for joining us there, Mr. Jason Unruhe, Unru pardon me, political commentator, joining us there out of Canada.